So it's now my pleasure to introduce the first guest. Um, his name is Patrick Dahlqvist. He is with us via Zoom and he is CEO of Insplorion. Insplorion is a company that offers battery and air quality sensors and NPS-based uh, research equipment. Let's find out more about what they do. Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hopefully we can be able to share a screen here too. But I do get a message that uh, host has to disable uh, participation in screen sharing. Could you, someone help me with that? There we go, thanks a lot. So, thanks for the introduction. Um, I am Patrick Dahlquist, CEO of Insplorium, uh, where we uh, are developing sensors for cleaner air, accelerated transition to fossil free energy and better research for life science and clean tech. Um, it's pretty good timing to be a, a, a new sensor technology company. Uh, looking at the mega trends in the world, um, PVC for instance are uh, picking out five of them, um, two that are not as directly relevant for us when it comes to a growing population as well as a shifting global power. But three of the mega trends are where we fit in and where we try to help and where we, uh, which enables us. Um, Climate change is something that is on everybody's lips, except at least except when COVID isn't. Uh, and then we have a continuous accelerating urbanization taking place. Supporting us uh, and providing the infrastructure for, for sensors is the rise of technology with internet of things. It would not have been at all as easy to come with a uh, cost-effective, uh, efficient uh, sensor technology just uh, 10 years ago. So that is good to keep in mind when, when looking into uh, why sensors uh, are becoming uh, uh, an interesting topic nowadays. When it comes to problems um, that we want to help in solve, we are a small uh, startup company um, growing fast, uh, but, but still uh, a fairly small player. But we have high ambitions. We want to help out and support with the big problems here in, in the world. Um, and two of them are related to fossil fuel uh, and usage of fossil fuels. Uh, carbon dioxide uh, and the problems that they uh, give us with uh, an increased uh, global temperature, uh, where we see, which can be seen, uh, especially in, uh, in the Arctic, where we have less mice, um, ice mass. But also, it has been easy to track extreme weather, and extreme weather is uh, five more times more common now uh, than since uh, the 70s. But what might not be as uh, well known is how fossil fuels also create carbon, uh, nitrogen dioxide, which uh, is together with particles uh, is very unhealthy for, for us. On a global scale, uh, it, uh, bad air quality kills about almost 9 million. And half of that are related to uh, what happens in, in, uh, when burning fossil fuels, in, and especially in cities. Almost, uh, or a little bit more than 4 million uh, people die earlier than what they would if it uh, due to um, bad air quality. This number, I think, is worth to have a second look at. Um, looking at the, our current crisis with the COVID, we are now at about 1 million uh, people who have died earlier uh, due to, to COVID. But on a yearly basis, there are 4 million just because of air quality uh, is bad in, in especially uh, the urban areas. But it's not only um, that it's unhealthy, it 
uh, bad unhealth also is creating um, huge costs, especially when it comes to that people can't go to work uh, due to uh, respiratory failures, uh, asthma, and, 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 and these kind of effects. Uh, on a yearly basis, uh, the cost is in, in the range of uh, uh, 1,200 billions just in, in Europe. And this is starting to be seen and uh, uh, looked into more and more. And that's why we start to see stronger and stronger regulations about uh, uh, to, to get better air quality. But to get better air quality and, and to help in solve um, uh, other factors such as improving batteries and improving uh, the uh, new technologies such as te technologies uh, used to adopt the hydrogen uh, for hydrogen cars and, and so forth. These, all these systems need to be optimized and to be able to optimize you will need to measure and to measure you basically need sensors and there is where we come in uh, as a, a new technology company. With our air quality sensors, we um, help to uh, optimize where to do infrastructure uh, uh, developments in, in cities, but also to help uh, private persons uh, where to uh, do their jogging this morning instead of uh, uh, this park instead of that park. When it comes to uh, batteries, there it's a new technology that needs to be optimized uh, and to do that uh, you ba we basically provide sensors to support with that and hydrogen uh, which is coming as an alternative uh, especially for long range um, and long uh, cycle storage uh, there is an increasing need for safety uh, and to be able to uh, have safety you need to measure that that you do basically have leaks and that's also an area where our technology fits in very well. Um, it all might look a little bit spread out with both working with air quality, battery sensor and hydrogen sensors. And then we also have for uh, uh, almost 10 years been selling this technology as a research instrument. But from uh, the inside, from our side, it actually looks exactly the same they are all based on the same sensor technology, uh, nanoplasmonic sensing that we uh, are developing within Insplorium. It's a technology that has uh, three patent families to protect it, uh, and it uh, serves as the basis for, for all applications. Just a few words about uh, what uh, uh, the technology is about. This is the only technology slide, so bear with me. Basically, what we have is uh, uh, a platform technology where we are using nanoparticles uh, on a uh, surface or a fiber. These nanoparticles basically work as uh, antennas that enhance an optical signal. So we have an, uh, a, a signal en enhancer thanks to the nanoparticles. Due to this increase in signal, we can work with low cost components uh, and still have a very high sensitivity. And this is the platform that we have with, with all our applications where uh, our nanoparticles uh, enables us to work with uh, cost effective components and still have a very high sensitivity. In, in that way, our platform uh, can become both small, robust, yet sensitive. And, and we can go in and, and work with applications where there is a high demand for uh, low, uh, to detect uh, small volumes, but where we also can uh, work with uh, many, many sensors at, at the same place. What we then do is to also coat our uh, sensors and have different uh, uh, materials on top of them. And that is how we got to get uh, selectivity for different applications. So this part is the same for all our applications, but for uh, air quality uh, and for hydrogen and for battery, the coatings are different. It is, as I mentioned, uh, patented, uh, where the mother patent has been approved in all major markets. 
and where our gas sensor as well as uh, battery sensor patent uh, are uh, are being approved in most, but it's uh, in most major markets. A few more words are about air quality. It's uh, air, air quality is something that we, you can measure today. For instance, you can uh, look at air, uh, air quality index on, on your cell phone, but that is based on high cost research instruments or, or measurement instruments that are placed a few in each city and, and often sit in, in rooftops. And that gives a good average of what, the, uh, what problem you have with air quality in, in the city that day. But to be able to optimize and, for instance, start to uh, um, make infrastructure uh, and good infrastructure decisions, should I exchange this uh, part of, of the uh, bus line uh, for uh, electric buses instead of uh, uh, diesel and do, do the correct one, the correct decision, you need to have much better uh, uh, resolution uh, and know which street has the problems and not only on, 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 on the city level but actually on, on a street level. So in, and in order to do that type of optimization you need to have uh, many many more sensors uh, spread around that are also giving information uh, in a timely way. So to, and to be able to measure both these low concentration as well as uh, in, in many more places in real time, there is a need for new technology. Current uh, sensors do not do that. And that is the reason why we started to develop and focus on, on nitrogen dioxide with our air quality sensors. Um, we are now in a very early uh, commercial phase with our uh, air quality sensor where we have started together with collaborations uh, to work with Mendel's start. Uh, and where we have a first uh, sales, um, we have an ongoing uh, collaboration with the Göteborgstad in a, a project called Internet of Things, uh, 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 Air and Water. And we have a uh, collaboration with a small startup company uh, or, or a small company called Leading Light, where we have implemented our sensors into their smart city lightning uh, uh, to get the, uh, the first reference customers. Uh, what we have also started to see when, uh, even though we started with smart cities, um, the need for measuring nitrogen dioxide uh, are also increasing uh, in inside building and in, especially in garages where you have uh, problems with nitrogen dioxide due to uh, combustion engines. You also have these type of problems in closed uh, compartments where there are uh, any type of diesel engines or, or any type of uh, fossil fuel engine, such as mining, where we start to see that there is also this need for many sensors uh, to, to measure uh, uh, locally and, uh, and, and fast. Um, the way that we work with getting to the market is basically working uh, locally first with uh, um, uh, uh, references uh, customers in, in the Nordic countries and um, uh, before going uh, to Europe and Asia. It is, as can be expected, a huge market in the numbers of billions when it comes to measurements for air quality, where we of course only have a, 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 the possibility to, to grab a small but still significant uh, chunk. A few words about our battery uh, sensor. As you all know, we start to see the transition to uh, uh, a uh, battery-based energy. Uh, um, electric vehicles are mostly known, but energy storage based on batteries is also picking up speed. But to make this transition to HAPE, uh, to happen faster, batteries need to be uh, uh, more efficient, um, especially having a, a better ratio with cost and to energy density. Uh, and one way to do this is, is to make them operate a lot 
uh, more efficient. This whole project started out with us taking our technology, uh, uh, being a university spin-off from Chalmers uh, in Gothenburg. We, of course, uh, walked over the water and talked to uh, Volvo uh, cars. And they told us about this frustration that they had, uh, that they become more and more dependent on batteries, uh, but still were not able to optimize the batteries. And they basically told us uh, about this uh, uh, problem that they today need to use uh, pretty large safety margins just not to harm the batteries. Uh, and basically set limitations in their control system, uh, their battery management system. Uh, we started to look into this and uh, realized that, yeah, it is a, a, a big problem. And, and, and this frustration is not only with cars, it comes with every battery. We can, for instance, ourselves see it uh, when our cell phone goes from 30% uh, down to 5% for no reason. That is due to that the set current sensor technology is not efficient when it comes to measuring batteries. And they basically told us that any type of information that can help us run the batteries more efficient is what we need. So we started uh, our uh, battery sensor uh, project where we basically go inside the battery and uh, are able to bring in uh, to the battery steering uh, information about chemical changes and then it becomes possible to optimize the batteries in a much more efficient way than previously uh, possible. Um, this is a project uh, since its uh, batteries are complex and the value chain are complex for batteries. We are uh, working uh, mostly with uh, larger development uh, projects uh, where we have been successful in getting uh, European funding in uh, mainly two uh, uh, major uh, projects. Uh, but it's maybe not only the funding that, that is uh, nice, it's also give uh, the credibility for the, the technology, but it's mainly the network that we get for the battery industries, where, for instance, the Three Believe uh, project, where we are developing the next automotive uh, battery, uh, it's more than 15 partners involved. Uh, Fiat and, and Volvo are, are the automotive parts, but uh, the whole battery value chains are, are involved so, so that we basically get access to and, and get uh, involved with these type of, uh, of players. Um, the market, as expected, are um, uh, huge. But it, it's interesting to see that uh, when it comes only uh, to sensor and steering type of technology for automotive battery sensors, uh, that is expected to in a few years be in the range of close to 5 billion US dollars. So uh, the need to optimize uh, is, is and, and that sensors plays a big part of that. Uh, it's something that the industry uh, is picking up more and more. Hydrogen is a project that we fairly recently started to work with within Explorion, but it has been running quite for some time uh, with our collaborative group at uh, uh, our founding group at uh, Chalmers University. Um, the reason uh, and what has been really nice with, with this project is that uh, our founding group from the very start st uh, start to look at the needs for hydrogen, uh, where there is a need for better safety, um, especially when, uh, when starting to look into hydrogen fuel stations, uh, but also in infrastructure. And uh, when it comes to safety, one of the most important features is to have a sensor that uh, uh, will respond quickly and our founding group were able to uh, uh, continuously evolve uh, the coating of, of our uh, used on our technology for hydrogen so that they could show that uh, the technology now is the fastest uh, hydrogen sensor uh, around. With that, uh, we now have the possibility to uh, uh, to implement in our platform that we have evolved with our air quality sensor. And thanks to that, we have been able to move very fast with, with, with this project. We are now developing together with uh, PowerCell as well as Chalmers, um, 
with the aim, especially for safety, but also for process control. Um, it has also been uh, 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 clear that the rest of the industry is picking up interest. For instance, we are finalists in the Shell Energy Challenge uh, with our hydrogen project. Um, a few words on uh, the sales that we are doing now, except for air quality, uh, the other projects are still in development phase, uh, but we have continuously sold our instrument as a research instrument. Um, we have three different products for when working with the uh, uh, technology, looking at the liquid applications. So this is for life science uh, in air uh, and high temperature, as well as uh, in combination with, with our other instruments. What is nice with selling it as a uh, uh, technology, especially for academia as a research instrument, is that the technology becomes much uh, uh, more and faster established what it can do. There are already uh, uh, not more than 90 scientific publications using our technology. So what it can do and how it works uh, is, is uh, well established now. It's also a way to get the, uh, our technology out there globally. When selling to academia, one of the benefits is that, that uh, it's basically where you have strong universities. So basically where you have strong universities, there are research customers uh, using our, uh, uh, our instruments. And it's also nice in this way that we as a company do not need to focus too much of uh, our efforts on research. We can stay on the development and prototyping and matching uh, our technology with where it makes most need on the market so that we can make this fit. Where is there a unmet need on the market that our technology can fit with? Uh, but for instance, both with a uh, battery sensor, especially with both the battery sensor as well as the hydrogen sensor, a lot of the uh, technological verification and development has done, been done in collaboration with academia. And we can focus on uh, uh, market development and prototyping and patent uh, uh, and then uh, and matching it with, with the market needs. And then we work in a collaborative way with both small and large actors uh, where we uh, initially take a larger uh, part of the value chain um, before uh, when we see that we step back because there are other people that are good at mass production. And that is basically how we work with, with uh, all our applications that we, uh, uh, for instance, with air quality, we work with a small actor such as Leading Light just to get market traction. And, and then we can, uh, for higher volume, uh, work with other actors uh, where the manufacturing can be made with a company such as Little Fuse, uh, where we have a, an ongoing collaboration. Same with battery and hydrogen. We work with PowerCell uh, as well as Ampte Powers, uh, which are fairly small players uh, to develop uh, and get market traction of our technology and, and learn the market. But then it's, it's other type of uh, uh, larger global players that we see uh, uh, get interested in the technology and uh, where we can take a step back and it becomes more of a license type of, of uh, uh, sales uh, for, for the large volumes. About the company, uh, we are now uh, 12 employees. We have recently strengthened our board with Jonas Inger, who comes in uh, with a commercial focus, uh, but still uh, hard for technology. So I think that is a very strong mix uh, supporting us. We have a uh, um, uh, in, in the team, we are a good mix with market and sales and business development people, uh, but still have our core uh, knowledge with uh, 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 technology development uh, and, and product development. And of course, we strongly, we work strongly with uh, our uh, academic partners at both Chalmers and, and, and Uppsala, for instance. Um, we have been listed at the Spotlight stock market uh, for uh, a little bit more than five years. Uh, we have a value of about uh, 25 million euros. Um, definitely more than 2000 uh, shareholders. I see a little bit different figures on that and have currently a strong funding uh, since um, uh, a little bit more than uh, a year ago. 
So to summarize, we have a uh, innovative sensor platform that are active and where we uh, sell in important areas where we try to help uh, uh, on, on a global scale for air quality uh, to make better decisions how to solve air quality problems for batteries to uh, get more out of batteries that currently can't be used uh, by measuring inside the cell and for hydrogen to solve the problems with uh, safety uh, around uh, hydrogen handling, both inside uh, 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 transportation methods as well as infrastructure. And we have a technology that is verified uh, and it's becoming more and more verified as we sell it as research instruments. It's patented and it gives a platform that is small, robust, sensitive, yet scalable. And with these uh, areas, uh, research instruments are on the market, uh, ha has had a continuous sales. Air quality is very early uh, sales. Uh, uh, hydrogen and battery uh, is moving on into uh, demonstrations in, in real uh, life. That's my presentation. I hope I kept my time in, uh, in a good manner and hope to have some good questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Patrick Dahlqvist from Insplorion. Um, I have one question here. We took questions from the, uh, all you attendees prior to this event, so I have them here in my script. And here's one for you, Patrick. Uh, which battery sizes uh, slash applications is Insplorion ideal for? Um, we started out with, with the automotive industry. Uh, so, so that's where we have much data. So when it comes to uh, um, which battery chemistries that we have, uh, we, we have uh, tried uh, at least four. We, we are not uh, uh, dependent for specific chemistries, but uh, there are uh, so far, except for uh, sodium ion, uh, are different varieties of uh, lithium ion. Uh, LFP and NFC are, are the two uh, chemistries that, that we have most uh, uh, work, mostly worked with. And we have um, uh, uh, both worked with coin cells, patch cells, and uh, pouch cells. Uh, coin and, and uh, patch are mainly used in, in research, while uh, the uh, pouch cell is uh, the more dominant uh, uh, cell type, especially for, uh, which is growing more for, for automotive. Um, but uh, we, we see automotive as, as the long-term goal, and mm. there are quite a few uh, battery applications uh, getting there. For instance, working with industrial power tools uh, and uh, uh, also uh, supercars and um, uh, utility vehicles. Well, thank you very much, Patrick Dahlqvist from Insplorion, and uh, best of luck. Thank you.